welcome to Lucky Losers and the second of three editions of Swindon in the air. Swindon uh, has a deep association with aviation. Uh, the first uh, part, which I released in May, was about its beginning, together with its pre- and post-war events. This edition is about its nearby Air Force bases um, and um, just to have a look at the ones I'm referring to let me show you this map so we'll be looking at the now defunct bases of RAF Lynham and Rawton and the one to the north of Swindon which is nowadays used as a standby base uh, uh, by the US Air Force and uh, for the international air tattoo that one is kind of operational there we'll be looking at other airfields in the uh, next edition in august that is uh, draycott redlands and the one here is lower upham and there will be another look at uh, south marston um, i forgot to mention that we'll also be looking at the a Concord story in this edition as well, which is linked to uh, RAF Fairford. So without further ado, we're going to uh, finish off uh, the historical part of the Concord story and its association with Swindon. Following that uh, will be the Air Force bases of Rawton, Lynham and Fairford. And by the way, I haven't included Bryce Norton or Kemble, um, they do have some connections with Swindon, but for want of time and space, um, I won't include them in this video. So, sit back and enjoy. Swindon had a long association with Concord, beginning with its first ever flight, which brought the first prototype to nearby RAF Fairford, the site of its official test centre and into our airspace in 1969. In that time, local companies played a huge part in its development, with both Vickers and Plessy challenged with designing, manufacturing and engineering many of the futuristic parts and electronics the aircraft required. There it became a familiar sight over our skies, as it landed and took off nearly every day during a five-year test programme before finally entering commercial service in 1976, ending a quarter of a century later, following the Paris tragedy. Concord was a familiar sight over Swindon, flying above our skies on its way to New York or Washington DC, just a few minutes after takeoff. Indeed, the sound reverberated even before it was visible. Interestingly enough, the Concord followed a conventional traffic lane until it reached RAF Lynham and then diverted to the acceleration point south of Swansea. From Lymanum onwards it had its own special track called Sierra Mike westbound and Sierra November eastbound. RAF Rawton was a Royal Air Force airfield near Swindon. Ministry of Defence aviation activity ceased in 1972. The airfield now belongs to the Science Museum Group and is home to the National Collections Centre which houses the group's large object storage and library. The airfield opened on the 1st of April 1940 and was used for the assembly and storage of aircraft during the Second World War. Control of RAF Rawton was handed over to the Royal Navy and it became the Royal Naval Aircraft Yard Rawton in 1972. The building of Rawton Airfield was planned before the war began and it was to play a major role in keeping the Allies flying. During the conflict, more than 7,000 aircraft of no less than 62 different flights were modified, serviced or repaired at Rawton's maintenance unit. In 1941, another unit, MU N No. 76, was also set up at Rawton to handle the packing of aircraft into huge crates for transport overseas.
RAF Rawton was a Royal Air Force airfield near Swindon. Rawton also became the final assembly point in the second half of 1943 for many of the gliders that were to play a key role in the liberation of Europe the following summer. Mosquitoes and more Lancasters made their last flights to Rawton during the 1950s, usually destined for the scrap heap, but one Lancaster, PA-474, came in for an overhaul in 1964, ready to join the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, of which it is still a member. The 1960s even saw work on Westland helicopters at Rawton, but by 1972 its life as a maintenance unit was over. In 2010, Defence Estate stated that the Ministry of Defence still owned some 4.22 hectares of the site, where two linked hangar-type buildings were used by the Directorate of Naval Recruiting. In 2016, a 50 megawatt solar farm was completed on about 67 hectares of the airfield with over 150,000 solar panels. This was a joint project of Public Power Solutions, a commercial arm of Swindon Borough Council and the Science Museum Group. From 2016 to 2019, the series uh, The Grand Tour operated their test track on the north end of the airfield with the track encircling part of the Science Museum's storage facilities. go on to uh, RAF Lynham. Uh, let's have a look at this printed photo of a Lockley T-130 Hercules, a nicknamed Fat Albert locally, a familiar sight above the skies of Swindon and District. As a teenager I was already interested in um, aviation and planes like this were a familiar sight and I would often look up at them in amazement. It was the nickname that local people used with some affection when talking about the Hercules though, um, not myself, um, it was a common sight uh, over the skies of Swindon for 55 years. Well, that's a long time, isn't it? So, uh, let's get on and find out about RAF Lynham. RAF Lynham was a Royal Air Force station located about 10 miles southwest of Swindon. The station was the home of all the Lockheed C-130 Hercules transport aircraft of the Royal Air Force before they were relocated to RAF Bryce Norton. RAF Lionham was the Royal Air Force's principal transport hub operating the modern Lockheed Martin C-130J Hercules and the aging but very adaptable Lockheed C-130K Hercules. The airfield became renowned for being the gateway between the United Kingdom and Afghanistan. The station was also where repatriation of British personnel killed in Iraq and Afghanistan took place. The bodies were transported through the nearby town of Royal Wooten Bassett, with crowds lining the streets to pay tribute to the fallen. The station closed on the 31st of December 2012, with the majority of its personnel and other assets having moved to RAF Bryce Norton. On the 31st of May 2011, a parade was held attended by the Princess Royal, to mark the departure of the squadrons. The final Hercules left Lynham on the 1st of July 2011. Daily flying operations ceased on the 30th of September 2011. The site is now known as the Ministry of Defence Lynham and is home to the Defence School of Electronic and Mechanical Engineering. The airfield was built in 1939, necessitating the demolition of Lynham Court Manor House, the buildings of Cranley Farm, and the village's tennis courts. The airfield itself was initially a grass landing area, although the RAF always planned to lay hard runways. Hangars and other buildings were dispersed around the site to avoid creating one large target for an aerial enemy. The station was opened on the 18th of May 1940 as number 33 maintenance unit, with no ceremony and few personnel. Shortly after, a single enemy aircraft attacked the station on the 19th of September 1940, dropping bombs before strafing part of the airfield. Five civilian workmen were killed. Lynham's first runways were constructed during 1940 and 1941, the longest being 1.334 metres, the other 1.080 metres. 
During the following years, these were both extended, and in 1943, the 1,829 metre north south runway was opened as well. On the 14th of October 1942, 511 Squadron was formed at RAF Lineham. As the war progressed, it expanded its long range transport role. The squadron continued to fly trooping flights, particularly between the United Kingdom and India, until it was disbanded on the 7th of October 1946. Several other squadrons with various roles operated throughout. If you've managed to get this far into the video, well done, thumbs up to you. Well, um, statistics show that probably you're not one of my subscribers. Thank you if you are, of course. I am grateful for every one subscriber that I have. In order to get a notification of future videos that I make, and I, they do come out at least twice a week, subscribe and press on the bell uh, to get notifications. And I want my channel to grow, but without your support, that won't happen. So thank you very much once again. And enjoy the rest of this video. Cheers. In 1956, with the arrival of the de Havilland Comet, operated by number 216 Squadron RAF, the main runway was extended from 1,800 metres to its present length of 2,390 metres. This necessitated the demolition of two hangars on the north side of the airfield and also the movement of the main gate from the north to the east of the station. 511 Squadron was reformed again at Lynham on the 15th of December 1959 as the second squadron to operate the Britannia on long-range trooping flights. It moved out of RAF Lynham for RAF Bryce Norton in June 1970 as Lynham became the airfield for the newer Lockheed C-130K Hercules. The squadron was disbanded on 6th of January 1976 when it was decided to withdraw in August 1991. RAF Lynham came under the media spotlight when John McCarthy was flown back from his five-year captivity in Lebanon to the Wiltshire base. Other famous names followed for RAF Lynham as they were released, such as Terry Waite and Jackie Mann. RAF Lynham received the first of 25 brand new Lockheed Martin C-130J Hercules on the 23rd of November 1999. The newer J-model aircraft worked side-by-side side with 29 refurbished C-130K Hercules, flown by 47 Squadron. On the 9th of November 2001, the MOD announced the strategic review of the future roles of RAF Lynham in anticipation of the arrival into RAF service of the Airbus A330 Voyager and the Airbus A400M, expected around 2010. At this stage, it was planned that both the C-130K and C-130J fleets would move to Bryce Norton in the summer of 2011, with the closure of Lynham completed by the end of 2012. It was thought unlikely that a further military use would be identified for the site. A parade attended by Princess Anne, the station's honorary air commodore, was held on the 31st of May 2011 to mark the departure of No. 24, No. 30 and No. 47 squadrons. The Douglas Dakota of the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight conducted a fly past. By mid-June 2011, around 1,000 of Lynham's 3,500 military and civilian personnel were left to complete the closure of the station. The final four Hercules departed Lynham at 10.30 on the 1st of July 2011, conducting a fly past around Wiltshire before heading for their new Oxfordshire home, one of them piloted by the station commander, Group Captain John Gladstone. A ceremony attended by Prince Prime Minister David Cameron was held at Bryce Norton on the 31st of October 2011 to mark the formal transfer of rep repatriations from Lynham. The station's air traffic control unit closed at 0001 hours on the 30th of September 2011, at which point all flying operations ceased. As a result, the RAF Lynham Flying Club moved to Cotswold Airport in Gloucestershire. On 1st of June 2012, an inscribed Portland Stone Memorial 
a bench and an oak tree were unveiled on the green within the village of Lynham. The memorial commemorates the RF's use of the nearby station for over 70 years. A flag lowering ceremony took place on the 17th of December 2012 with Lynham officially closing as an RAF station on the 31st of December 2012. After... RAF Fairford in Gloucestershire, 10 miles north of Swindon, is currently a standby airfield and therefore not in everyday use. Its most prominent use in recent years has been as an airfield for the United States Air Force B-52s during the 2003 Iraq War, Operation Allied Force in 1999 and the first Gulf War in 1991. It is the US Air Force's only European airfield for heavy bombers. RAF Fairfield was the only transoceanic abort landing site for NASA Space Shuttle in the UK. As well as having a sufficiently long runway for a shuttle landing, the runway is 3,046 metres long. RAF Fairford is also the home of the Royal International Air Tattoo, an annual air display, and is one of the largest air shows in the world, with the 2003 show recognised by the Guinness World Records as the largest military air show ever, with an attendance of 535 aircraft. RAF Fairford was constructed in 1944 to serve as an airfield for British and American troop carriers and gliders for the D-Day invasion of Normandy during World War II. The RAF used it to lift British troops for Operation Market Garden during World War II. In the early years of the Cold War, the British and American governments reached an agreement under which elements of the US Air Force strategic air control would be based in the United Kingdom. In 1948, the Americans occupied RAF stations including Fairford, Bryce Norton and others to build up a deterrent in Europe against the Soviets. In 1950, as a result of the beginning of the Cold War, the airfield was transferred to the United States Air Force for strategic bomber operations. A 3,000 metre runway was constructed for long-range bomber operations. The runway was completed in 1953 and served as a forward airbase for the first Convair B-36 Peacemaker aircraft. The airfield later received B-47s which were maintained as a, at a heightened state of alert because of increased tensions with the Soviet Union. Due to the long runway, Fairford was chosen in 1969 as the British test centre for the Concorde aircraft until 1977. The US Air Force returned with Boeing KC-135 Strato tankers deployed on rotation from the many KC-135 bases in the USA. On the 15th of November 1978, the 11th Strategic Group was activated at RAF Fairford. KC-135 and KC-10 tankers deployed to Fairford supported Operation El Dorado Canyon against Libya in 1986. Due to the RAF Fairford's location and infrastructure, the airfield is designated as a forward operating location for the Air Force of the United States. It was used in the first Gulf War in 1991 with B-52s and KC-135s from Eica AFP in Arkansas. Due to the deteriorating airfield facilities and its unique NATO heavy bomber mission, RAF Fairford underwent a $100 million upgrade of its runway and fuel systems in the largest NATO funded airfield construction project within a NATO country since the end of the Cold War. In 2010, the United States Air Force withdrew all its uniformed staff from the station by September 2010, leaving a civilian operating unit to maintain the base on a care and maintenance basis. However, the base remains a designated standby airfield for heavy bomber operations, capable of immediate reactivation within 24 to 48 hours, and it continues to host the Royal International Air Tattoo every July. In September 2014, Fairford was used as the staging base for US President Obama's trip to the NATO conference held in Newport, Wales. Air Force One aircraft carrying the President and his entourage 
and support aircraft arrived on the 3rd of September. The U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry also arrived in his own U.S. Air Force C-32 aircraft. Air Force One with President Obama departing from Washington on the 5th of September after an impromptu visit to Stonehenge on his way to Newport back to RAF Fairfoot. Currently, Fairfoot is a forward operating location made available to the United States by the UK government. Well, that's everything as far as Swindon in the air is concerned. Um, as, I've just, as I've mentioned, uh, there will be one final edition in August looking at the other airfields of Swindon and some oddities and curiosities connected with Swindon in the air. So join me in August for the next edition. I hope you've enjoyed this one and thanks for viewing. See you soon. And don't forget to do all the YouTube stuff, of course. Bye!